Hi there, this is Brad Morse from the University of Colorado Centers for American Indian Alaska Native Health coming to you with session number six, Bubble Science. Today we're going to have a lot of fun playing with bubbles. This is a great session. The youth in your club are going to be really excited to go ahead and do this session. When they see the materials out on the table that you've presented, I think it'll pique their excitement and they'll be really enthusiastic about learning about science, the science of bubbles. There's a lot of different things you can do and it's a chance for the youth to get their hands on some materials and to let their creativity just flow and have fun doing bubbles with one another and it's a non-competitive sort of setting that each child can participate in. They'll have a lot of fun uh, bouncing ideas off of one another and how to make their bubble contraptions. So, this session takes about 35 minutes. I, that's what the manual says. I have a really strong feeling that it's going to be a session where the youth are going to get excited and have fun and so it can extend way past 35 minutes. But that's what the manual is suggesting that you allot for your planning, your time. The student activities in this session are uh, constructing bubble makers. Uh, then they get to experiment with their bubble makers and make observations and predictions, as we've done in several of the previous sessions in After School Science Plus. I think some of the student discoveries that we're going to see today is that the shape of the bubble maker usually does not affect the, affect the shape of the bubble. So to say that again more clearly, the shape of the bubble maker usually does not affect the shape of the bubble. So we'll see that we have different tools and those tools will usually create the sh same shape of bubble. It's obviously a sphere or a circle. The, um, the size of the bubble maker, on the other hand, doesn't influence the size of the bubble. Um, another observation that youth will make is depending on how much air you get into the bubble, that will really define the size of the bubble. And it's always fun to have the youth look through bubbles to see the rainbow, the color spectrum, that the light when going through the bubble will present to the youth. So that's a lot of fun to point out. It's um, something that we see in the summer when we see sprinklers or hoses and light coming through the water. It's the same here as bubbles. When light goes through a bubble, you'll see a whole spectrum of colors like a rainbow. Some of the skills that the youth will be acquiring and sharpening today are comparing, creative thinking, decision making, inferring, model making, motor coordination, again fine and gross. So the fine motor skills that the youth will be using is to make their bubble makers and the gross is just to have fun and experiment. They'll probably make bubbles, chase and pop them, um, that kind of thing. Observing the different type of bubble makers and what the result of each bubble maker is and predicting. I really want to stress or influence or speak about how much creativity can go into this particular session. The youth can use the tools that you find in your toolkit to make any type of bubble maker contraption. It's a really good opportunity for the youth to just use their skills and their imagination and have fun. So the science behind the bubble science is, is interesting and it's good for them to start to use those words in an appropriate way and that's really again the thrust of After School Science Plus is getting the vocabulary to the youth in a friendly way so they can start using those words for science. Today we have four different words. The first word is adhesion. The force of attraction between molecules made of different substances. When glycerin, water, and soap molecules join together in the bubble solution, it's an example of adhesion. When the sticky stuff on band-aid sticks to your skin, that too is adhesion. That second sense is a really good example for youth that they can relate to. Of course, they've had band-aids in the past. so. To stay, say that again, when the sticky stuff on bandage sticks to your skin, that is also adhesion. The next word is cohesion. 
force of attraction between molecules of the same substance. The force of cohesion holds together things in which the molecules are alike. For example, a metal spoon or a block of wood do not disintegrate because cohesion keeps their molecules together. The next word is probably the most difficult for the youth in this set of four words. It's molecule. The smallest particle of an element or compound that can exist independently and still retain the chemical properties of the element or compound. And the manual gives an example that you can share with the youth so that they kind of start to see the size and scope of what a molecule is. A molecule of air is so small that when both hands are cupped together, there are 623, three, uh, eight sets of zeros, th eight sets of three zeros, air molecules between them. So let's write that number out. That number for molecule looks like this. It's a very large number. Number. In fact, it looks like a lot of bubbles in a series. So they call this in the, in the manual an octillion. An octillion refers to eight groups of numbers, which we have eight groups here. The 630 followed by seven sets of three zeros each, and that is an octillion. So when you put your hands together, there is 630 octillion molecules in your hand. Of course, some people have larger hands and some people have smaller hands, so that number can vary drastically. But for the average person, I would say there's 630 octillion air molecules in your hand when you cup them. That just is amazing, and the size and scope will be fun for the, the kids to think about. All that space in there contains that many of one molecule, one type of molecule. And the third, or excuse me, the fourth word is volume. The amount of space which something takes up. The volume of bubble is the amount of space taken up by the bubble. So depending on the size of the bubble, that will change the volume of the bubble. So if it's a larger bubble, it has more volume, the space that it takes up. If it's a smaller bubble, it'll take up less space, therefore having less volume. These are the words that you'll want to use in the club with the youth when you're going over the science of bubbles and it's fun for kids to start trying to use the words in accurate and correct ways. So have fun with the words and uh, next we'll be looking at some of the bubble makers that you and the youth can make during bubble science. So a good approach to this session is to set out all the materials on the table before the youth arrive. To let them look it over, you may want to make a couple contraptions before the youth get to the club so you have examples and they can imagine what they would like to do with their materials once they get to make their own bubble makers. So for this session you're going to have some pipe cleaners, some straws, you'll need some scissors and some string, and just as a reminder a note to the manual there is a recipe to make your own bubbles. We thought it would be a good idea to send out bubbles to the clubs just because it takes about 24 hours to make the bubbles and sometimes um, planning can be difficult and we just wanted to make sure that when you're ready for after school science session number six that you had all the materials in your toolkit that you could do go straight away. But just as a reminder there is a, a formula for making your own bubbles that you can do after after school science or another time when you pick up the after school science for another set of kids or when the 10 to 12 year olds age out and you have more kids that want to do after school science you could do it repeatedly so just as a reminder there is a formula for you to make your own bubbles in the manual and it is on page 
61, excuse me, 59. It's on page 59 here in the manual. So once you have all your materials out, the youth can make shapes with strings and pipe cleaners. All these items are going to be able to make bubbles. Um, there's a few examples in the manual of what to do. This here is a square bubble maker. What's fun about this one is that although it's square, it's most likely going to make the same shape of bubble. Obviously, it's going to be a sphere. That's what a bubble is. You can also make a triangle one and have the youth make a bubble from this contraption and observe what the bubble looks like and what shape the bubble takes. One of the easier bubble makers is just a cup with a hole in it. Again, this is a really good opportunity for the youth to use their imagination and make their own bubble makers. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to extend the learning. There's some examples in the manual. One of the examples is making bubble castles. And that's where you put bubbles in a pan, just a very shallow amount, very little, just so it covers the whole pan. And then you blow air through a straw and you can build bubble castles. So follow the manual, get some suggestions from the manual, um, make a couple bubble makers before the youth arrive, and then put the materials out so that the youth can work off your examples and make their own bubbles. Next I'm going to show you how some of these contraptions work and the bubbles they make. So now it's time for the fun part, actually getting to make bubbles and playing with the bubbles. So I showed you some of the examples that the manual had for the different type of bubble makers and I'm just going to go through each example right here. This is the cup with a hole in it. You just blow through the cup. And you can catch the bubble or try to catch it. Uh, I found this to be the hardest bubble maker to actually get a bubble to go through. But that's a good observation in this curriculum for the kids to make. That the cup works, but it requires a lot of breath to blow through the cup to make the bubble. So this is the cup. I found that the pipe cleaners are a lot of fun and they actually make great bubbles. It's the one that makes the most bubbles, in fact, that I've found. They're smaller, but there's more of them. And you can use a pipe cleaner to try to catch the bubbles. And it's, that's a lot of fun. And try to catch multiple bubbles or catch your friend's bubbles. And see what happens when you catch one and it turns into two, like so. What happens also when you blow more air through the bubble? Sometimes you blow a bubble in a, blub, a, a new bubble in the bigger bubble, or tiny bubbles. So there's just a lot of different things that happen when you blow bubbles through the pipe cleaner. This contraption is making the biggest bubbles that I've seen today. This is a triangle bubble maker. And when a youth or you make one of the triangles, one of the manual's suggestions is to ask the youth what kind of shape the bubble is going to come out in um, because it's being blown through a triangle hole. Of course, it's still just a bubble, it's a spear. Also, this square bubble maker is another good one. The manual does suggest that for these type of bubble makers that you position the straws over the knot. So it has a nice clean perimeter or boundary or edge to blow through. 
the knot kind of makes the bubble harder to blow. So just put it in your straw. This one's a lot of fun. I think this one's my favorite. And that is the biggest bubble I've blown so far. Ask the youth what happens when a bubble's big. Does it go up in the air or does it sink to the ground? Just make observations about what happens. Using some of the vocabulary words that we have, adhesion, cohesion, molecule, and volume. So that's a lot of fun with the bubbles. There's a lot of different bubbles that are created. Uh, there's some extension learning in the, the manual about bubble castles. The way you make those is just taking a straw and blowing into the pan of bubbles, which uh, can get kind of messy, but it's a lot of fun. This is what they call a bubble castle. Bubble upon bubble that you blow into your basin of bubbles. Now my basin has edges and so I had to blow a lot of bubbles for it to come out. So if you have a flat pan, it's going to be easier to see the bubbles. Um, but that's a lot of fun too, the bubble castle. You can try to count the bubbles. You can pop the bubbles. Just generally have a fun time with your bubbles. Another example in the manual about uh, how to extend the learning is to use food coloring for your bubbles. I would suggest just using very little food coloring when you color your bubbles, but you can uh, ask the youth what colors they would like to use. Um, it might be a good idea to help the youth put the color in to the pans so that you don't have a mess everywhere. Um, one really important wor warning is that Think, be conscious and think about where you're going you're gonna to do this session. If you have a hard floor and it's tile, all the bubbles landing on the floor will pop and the floor will become very slippery. So that's one uh, thing I would uh, warn everybody about from the beginning is just to be, um, think about where your session is going to take place and make sure it's not happening on a very hard floor that can become slippery when the bubbles pop on it. We don't want anybody falling down and, and getting hurt. So this has been session number six, Bubble Science for After School Science Plus. I hope you have a, a fun time with this. And remember about the formula to make your own batch of bubbles, uh, which would be really good for the summertime as well. Uh, take care, have fun, and this is Brad Moore signing off for After School Science Plus. Take care.